Okay, so first of all, uh, before we start uh, using ELP, so we have to uh, go to the ELP first. So uh, basically, uh, we have multiple ways to get into the ELP. Okay. So the first way is just type the URL here, so the elp.mirror.edu.my, and then press enter, it will uh, bring you to the website. And then uh, secondly, you, just, you can just search the ELP, okay, Google the ELP, so basically it will be the top result. Just click and go into the website, okay. So another way, uh, for example, we can go to New Era website, and then uh, at the bottom, uh, switch to English first. All right, so at the bottom, they got a uh, NEUC student, and then the online service, the first one, electronic learning portal, okay, this one, and then click and go. So when you first arrive here, so uh, we have to log in first. So log in. So this one log in uh, is using your e-account, which is uh, the account will be given to you during uh, you have registered with uh, HR department. So they will get, give you a PDF file, right? So at the last page of the PDF file, have the e-account information okay, for you guys. So just uh, copy the info and then log in. So I log in my account. Okay, so, okay, after login, uh, there will be multiple, uh, what we call block, okay, block. Basically, you will see like this one, the left hand side, the middle side, and the right hand side. Okay, so the first one, the left top corner there, there is a button to let you toggle the left menu on and off. So basically, uh, most of us will forget why the left menu will disappear. So just come and click this one button. It will show and hide. Okay, so. On, for this page, what we can see is um, is your courses, okay? These courses is your courses uh, you will teach in this semester, okay? So the previous one we also list here. So it's the previous semester, which is uh, uh, I have enrolled you into your courses, okay? So the other thing, uh, the right-hand side, there is a uh, courses, my courses, this one. Uh, uh, if you have free time, you can browse through it, okay? Uh, you can see the whole school, uh, whole semester, every every faculty, every department, what their courses open. Uh, that you can have a look over there. Okay, so okay at the right top corner there. Uh, somehow uh, our student, uh, I know some of you uh, have a communication method. Uh, for example, use the Facebook or WhatsApp or some else uh, for communication with the student but some of the teacher i know they prefer to not give out give the handphone number out because you know some student always call in and some student always have question so at the right top corner here there is a chat icon okay beside my name you can see that so you can click on it so this is a function where you can chat with your student Okay, so basically you can see uh, there's some student uh, ch chat with me before. So click inside, just like the messaging, uh, it's exactly the messaging. Uh. So you have to search uh, the name, the student name. Uh, for example, uh, C-H-O-O-N-G. Is it correct? Chong Wei Long. Uh, wrong already, yeah. Okay. Oh no, this is not a good. Or oh, maybe I have tested in the administration side, so uh, not a good way. Search for user or post. Uh, Ah, yeah, so you have to click the contacts and then search the student name. Then you can start to chat with this student. Okay, so make sure you don't chat with the wrong student. Ah. Okay, this is the chat uh, messaging function. So you can use to 
uh, convey message or you're having a conversation with a student. Okay, this is the site wide function. So everywhere you can use, everywhere in the ELP you can use. Okay, so okay, let's come down here. The cost overview. So the cost overview uh, is your cost. Uh, you have taught or you will be teaching uh, in the coming semester. So uh, let's click inside here. So for example, uh, after I click inside here, you can see the screen. So uh, let me explain uh, one by one. From the laptop corner, this is the course ID, which is the course code have been given to you together with the, uh, the course name together from Zisan. Yes. So some people will ask the 203, what is it? So this is a short code I have used to uh, uniquely differentiate the same course from another semester. For example, this, courses, this course, uh, maybe it will open in the coming semester and it, it have also been open uh, in the previous semester. But in our Moodle system, uh, we cannot use a single code uh, from the start to the end. So I have to use a unique code to differentiate the, the same courses from the different semester. So 203, the meaning of 203 is the year 2020 and the third digit, the three, is the third semester of the year. So the coming semester, uh, main semester, is the third semester in new era. So this is the meaning of the 203. So basically, this is a very, very simple concept. Okay, so this one is the course code, and then this one is your course name. Okay, so coming down here, and then uh, we will see the course category here. Okay, course category. So you can see the course category is from a big root, and then uh, narrow down to the 2020 year, and then the main semester, and then the uh, the what the faculty and the department and then narrow down to your course okay so when you click on the department you will see all the courses offered by this department okay so this one this uh although we see a very blank page so most of the most of us uh, have no idea okay when i arrive here what should i do what should i do next Okay, so everything start from the right hand side, the gear icon. Okay, the gear icon. You click on the gear icon, turn editing on, everything start from here. Turn editing on. After clicking, so you will see there's a lot of add an activity, add an activity, so it will appear here. So this add an activity, so you can add an assignment or upload your file, upload uh, some message or some URL link, okay? So you want to, you want the student to see, okay? You can, you must add through here, okay? So for next, we have the participant uh, at the left hand side here, the participant. So this participant is the list of your student okay who has enrolled in this course okay how the student uh, can enroll basically they have to find out themselves for, for currently la. i believe the department have also given the course structure or something for our student to reference so they have to refer to that list and then search these courses and then enroll themselves okay so for enrolling uh, we need a password to enroll. I mean, the student have to key in a password to enroll themselves. So uh, let's get to the page. Okay, for here. So every student, they have to key in a uh, password and then click the enroll me to enroll themselves. Okay, so at here, it will display your name to them. So the enroll code, the enrollment key for the devout is the course code. Okay, is the course code removing all the removing all the symbols from your code? For example, you might have a b i b i s dash two one two three. So I will remove the dash from the course code. Okay, if you have b i b i s uh, space with a two one two three, I will remove the space. So only the alphabet and the digit. Okay, 
no extra hyphen, uh, no apostrophe, nothing. Just uh, alphabet plus digit one. Okay, so this code is default one. So everybody can enroll. But uh, I know last semester we have a headache, right? So some of the students, they like to enroll to every course they can find. So uh, what we can do is we can change the enrollment key. Okay, so the other student cannot get into your course. But you have to remember, uh, because you have changed, uh, not the default code. So you have to give your student or maybe you can wait until everybody has enrolled inside so you change the code okay so nobody can order nobody can has, uh, harass your student okay so uh, how to change the code uh, basically we can come here participant so we can come here the participant and then the right hand side we have a gear icon always the gear icon okay and the self enrollment student Okay, self-enrollment student, which will come this page, come to this page. Okay, now we have two options to block the uh, the other student. Okay, so the first one is we change the allow new enrollment. We change to the no. Okay, Let's change to the no. So the current enrollment will remain. The new enrollment will not be allowed. So the second is uh, change the enrollment key. Okay, so like just now mentioned, you have to remember to give to your student uh, to enroll or else they cannot find the enrollment method, enrollment key. Okay, so these two methods to block the, the other student. Uh, but some will think, uh, can I remove the enrollment option? For example, when we come here, the enrollment method, okay, so you can see the enrollment method we have three over here so the first one uh, manual enrollment you as a teacher you can enroll your student inside manually done by you one by one okay enroll as a student or enroll as a teacher you can do this yourself one by one so you search their name and then add over here so this will be your student or your teacher or something Okay, this is the manual, manual enrollment you've done yourself. And then second is just now mentioned one, the self-enrollment student. So some, uh, some people say, hey, can I delete this option or can I just hide this option or disable this option? Well, basically you don't do this because if you do this, the current enrollment will disappear. Okay, so all the student has enrolled inside they can no longer see your content. So don't do this. Just change the, just change the enrollment method or the, the, the new enrollment to no and then and or the enrollment key. Okay, so the last one is the flat form. This is uh, what I use to enroll the teacher into the course. Huh? So this one uh, is done by the typing the command in uh, over the command line. So this one, just leave it. Okay, so here you can see your student participant. Okay, what their name, what their address, and when they have a, when they have access to your course. So you can check. Oh, how come this student no come? Huh? So or you check. Eh, already one month the student uh, disappeared. So you cannot. Uh, somehow they cannot lie to you lah. Hey, teacher, you didn't have class. Huh? So you check here. Basically, they cannot lie one. All right, next. Okay, so that's about the participant and the enrollment. So the enrollment will control who can enter and cannot enter. So uh, everybody okay, yeah? Okay, let's come out here. The most, uh, sorry, the most important part. Okay, you have to upload your course where? Okay, your slide, uh, your Zoom recording, uh, or your word file. Uh. So what we can do, what we can upload is over here, this long list, what you can do, you can upload. Okay, so you click on the end and add an activity, and then the, this will show up. There are two type activity. So one is activity, one is the resource. So for example, you want to create a 
you want to collect homework okay so you create the assignment so we click at this somehow takes some time okay so when you click and add an assignment so you will come over here so the first one assignment name you have to give one name first assignment one uh, for example okay now the middle part additional file this one is you can give some extra file to your student for example there's a journal you want them to read first or some uh, example you want them to refer to okay you can drag and drop here so okay next one availability so you allow the submission from when to when the due date okay the cut off date cut off date is uh, the deadline of the deadline after this time after this period no more submission okay so when you enable this after this time no more late submission okay the due date still allow late submission the cut off date not allowing the late submission over the more than the time you have set here okay this is the availability so this one showed in description so when they go over to the assignment activity they will, they will see the, the pass up that uh, you set here okay next submission type submission type basically we always uh, accept a uh, file submission which is uh, you give them a file word file and then they edit they key in their answer and then they upload the word file to you okay so this we call file submission or you want them to make uh, make some photo or uh, make some video okay so you can uh, you must allow the file submission the online text is basically the text okay the the what the content the text content they have generated just paste in the elp not the uh, not the upload file one okay so the maximum submission type submission size uh, i have set to uh, 50 megabyte uh, the largest one uh. okay okay so the next one that's a submission type and then the next one is the turn it in i know uh, everybody like to check the turn it in for the plagiarism checking right so this is very simple step you just turn on the turn it in okay and then uh, there are some detail setting uh, maybe you can play around here just basically enable turn it in yes okay and then ELP will done the checking for you okay so we didn't give the turn it in account to everybody we integrate the turn it in with the ELP so the job can be done automatically okay after you have changed all the necessary or not necessary you can just leave it okay save and return to cost so the assignment will be created It's take some time. <laughs> okay, next while we waiting. So add file uh, is the meaning of uh, you upload your file to ELP. So uh, two ways to upload. The first one is uh, we are the just now the, the the menu activity menu or the second way drag and drop the file over here. So for example. I was stuck here. So for example, uh, you want to upload, but you don't want to type many, many characters. So you can just, for example, this is your, this is your chapter one, and then you just drag it into the ELP. So the, the box will appear and then add file, it will show up and then you just drop it lift your finger okay and then the file will be uploaded automatically okay next label and url uh, this is the label is the simple text or some text you want to uh, convey to your student so just type it and then uh, save it will display on the elp so basically on the the, the yeah stuck here 
basically on the on the what we call the cost dashboard here. So next, the URL. URL is like you want to share a web page to your student and then uh, you just copy the URL and then uh, make a name for it and then save and display, basically like this, like this only. So come back here. So I demo the upload file. So basically this one is my file and then I want to upload the file. Yeah, I cannot upload here. Sorry, that's my limitation of my of my operating system. Never mind. So I upload file here, and then I choose the file. Okay, let's name it chapter one, and then I try to drag here. And see if it, it doesn't work. So if I if the if the drag and drop doesn't work, so you can click on the here on here the add button. So add button, and then uh, you have to find the file. So for example, this one, this one, and then uh, for example, this is my chapter one. Okay, and then I upload the file. So in your operating system, uh, I guess you guys are using the Windows Ten, right? So Windows Ten is just drag and drop. That's simple. Okay. So and then after you have drop everything here save and return so the file will appear here so uh, for the name you can just click on the pen beside this so you can uh, rename the, 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 the chapter okay the file name for example i want to rename this uh, chapter one introduction okay and then enter if you've done the editing okay so for example i have uh, four things here so uh, at the right hand side there is an edit menu so the edit menu, uh, you can choose to hide or show this particular uh, item. So if you hide this, it will become a gray color and then your student cannot see it. So only you can see it. They cannot download, they cannot see it. So this is basically the uh, same thing with the appearance. Uh, sorry, not the common module setting, visible. So I change to the show and then the eye will be open. So this is the you can hide something uh, in front of student. These are, these are tricks I always use. Uh. Okay, next, uh, the attendance. So the attendance uh, is created like this. So add an activity and then the attendance. So for example, I don't change the name. I just, there's a multiple step to create this one. The first step is, uh, you create this one first and then step and return. There's an attendance here. And then you have to go into the attendance and to add a section. Okay, for example, I have class tomorrow. So I change a class to 6th of May. Uh, sorry, cannot. Uh, 16 of May. Ah, okay, 16 of May and uh, 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. Okay, and then I just save. So for this one, student recording allows student to record their own attendance. This one is you allow the student to tick their own attendance. If you trust your student, you can just do it. But if you don't, maybe they are sleeping and then the middle, the, the finger just click it and then go to sleep. So I just usually I don't on this one. I want everybody on the Zoom and then I count on the name one by one. So I click, I click one by one. Okay. I, so after adding, you can see the single section here. So how to take the attendance is you click on the this one, the green dot. Okay, the green dot. Okay, so if you have a student here, just like the participant, you have the, a list of your student, and then you can just click on the either one, the PLEA, either one. Okay, what is the PLEA? Uh, over here, there is a status set. Okay, so you can define your attendance uh, acronym here. Okay, so the P is uh, basically for a present, L is for late, and then uh, etc. So you can you can de delete the one you don't want, and then leave or leave the one you want. For example, you don't you, you don't want to count the late, you don't want to count the excuse. You just want present or absent, so you can just delete the late and excuse leave the present and absent absent so for example i delete this one the late 
Okay, I delete the excuse. So I update. Okay, then I go back to the section. Okay, so the at the PLEM now we only have P and A. So you have to remember yourself P is what A is what. Uh, basically, it only allows one character for this one. I've tried it before. It doesn't allow more than one character. So you have to remember what is P, what is A. So you can set straight away set all student to present or straight away set all to all student to uh, absent. Uh, this is up to you lah. So after you have changed, then uh, just save attendance. Okay. So after that, you can check from the report here. Okay, the report here, and then uh, you can see who is uh, the, the, the result of the attendance uh, for that particular section of classes. Okay, this uh, attendance one. Uh, okay, until now, is it everybody is still okay? Oh, I can't see the chart. The student can enroll now. Yes, the student can enroll now. But you have you must have yourself your name list up the name list. Ask them to enroll. Uh, do I need to ask them to enroll? They will automatically receive mail. No. Huh. Maybe the what causes they have is they have to take in the mass semester is uh, from the department office right so uh, from yesterday is the class the course registration date start from yesterday I don't know until when if maybe not mistake is two weeks so during these two weeks they will have to register their subject so for this after they have registered the subject in the uh, CMS, so uh, they will have to come over here, the ELP, and then uh, enroll themselves into their respective courses. When do we use show and hide file? Uh, somehow, for my for my case, uh, I somehow uh, for example i want i have uploaded a material but that material i just want to show on class okay for my convenience i want to click on the elp okay for, for example this is the week i'm using so i want to conveniently click and show so i just uh, make a make make a link here or upload the file here and then i hide it from student so i can i can show it on the class, but I don't want to give the student. Yeah. Each week we need to do the setting for the attendance, just like what you did. Uh, there's a multiple section over there. So you can add section. You can add more section. For example, this one from 12 p.m., 12 a.m. to 9 a.m. Okay, so you have generated two sections. So when the day arriving, so you just go into the particular date and then uh, start doing the attendance. Yeah, okay, thank you. So, okay, everybody okay now? Oh, sorry, my English is a bit messy. Okay, let's come over the quiz. Uh, for me, I'm not very familiar with the quiz uh, so i i just tell what i know so the quiz okay uh, let's start from the beginning okay make a quiz and then add so after you have arrived here so for example quiz two okay over here the timing the timing Open the quiz and close the quiz is uh, like you imagine you are sitting in the examination room and then uh, the teacher told you 9 a.m. start until 12 p.m. 
So you, you just set the same thing over here. And then the time limit is the, for example, that is a three hours long. So the student must complete the quiz in the, the, the time period you have set here. So you just enable and then the, the minutes or the hours, for example, three hours here. And then the student, once they have start the quiz, they must and they must finish the quiz within the time limit or before the closing of the quiz, whichever come first. Okay, so uh, for, for below this, if you have using the great one, uh, this one, I, I personally, I didn't use it. Uh, if you can, you can set to great, so uh, the ELP can do all the, can do all the, what the, mark calculation can do all the mark calculation for you, but you have to step it before the semester start. Lah. Can we upload the crazy.com link at this tab? Uh, not in here. The crazy has a, after you have quit, create the quiz, you, you, you have the link, right? So you come over here, add an activity and the link, add an URL. Okay, add an URL and then add. So you just uh, make a name here, uh, Quizzy, is it? I, I don't know the spelling. And then uh, the link over here. So you just paste it, paste the link. For example, I come over here, uh, ah, yeah, this one. Okay, so for example, this is my link. So I just paste over here and then scroll down, save and return. Okay. So you have done. So when your student come over here, you want, you say, oh, okay, let's start the quiz. So everybody have to come over here and then click and then go to the crazy, the crazy.com. So uh, this one, basically you can uh, set the, you can set the restriction access. Okay, this one is very useful. The below, below this part, uh, uh, most of the activity, they have this part, so you can, uh, find, find it out. For example, this re access restriction, so you can set the date, okay? Even for today, I want the student must match the following date, okay? From today is uh, three o'clock. For example, I want them four o'clock can, the, can see this link. And then until, uh, until, five o'clock for example. So I, I can restrict the student to only can see this link within this time period. Oh, sorry, I've set the wrong time. Until, okay, from this time until this time, save. Okay, not available unless after this time and before this time. So you can set the time period for the student to, to, to only this period can see this item. So every, every, every activity you can set. For example, this chapter one PPT, I want to set it also can. So I go back and then edit, okay? So the restrict access, okay? Do the same thing that student must match the following and then this one and then this one until this one, for example, like this. So they can see from 5th of May, 12 a.m. until the 4 p.m. Save and return. Okay, so we will show, show this one for you. Okay. So this is a time restriction or some else. Uh, just now you can see there is another rules. Okay, add restriction. There's another restriction set, so you can uh, play around here. So basically, uh, most of the time, I just use the date. Lah. For example, if you have, you have used the grade, so the ERP will automatically calculate the grade for you. For example, the assignment one, okay, once they, they have passed up the assignment one, then you can grade them inside the ERP. Okay, for example, uh, the, the assignment one, who have get more than 80 marks so they can see this material who have below 80 marks they can see another material you can do 
the switching like this. But I, I seldom use it lah because for me it's like headache. I just show everyone everything. Okay, the restriction. After doing attendance, then does it mean that we don't have to submit the attendance to the department? Uh, this question may be go back to the department because you still have to claim your teaching hour, right? Is it a click? Is it a must to click attendance in ELP? Not, not a must, but it depends on the teacher what the way to collect the attendance. This also can go back to the department. Uh, this is only the one of the choices for you to do the attendance collection. Okay. Okay. Until now. So, okay, the quiz. So just now we have quit, correct? The quiz. Hey, where's the quiz? Once, once more. Quiz. Okay, quiz three. Step and return. Okay, and then we come back over the quiz just now, just created, and then go back to the quiz, and then we have to edit the quiz. Uh, we have to add the question. So beside this, we have uh, some 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 menu. This one preview later we will use it. So uh, edit quiz. So for example, I just do two question. The first one add a question. So this is a multiple choice question. So multiple choice question name. For example, I do a simple mathematic. One plus one equals two. Okay. So the question text I also paste the same. And then default mark, for example, I give it five marks. Uh, okay. So the answers, there's a choice one, choice two, choice three, and etc. So the choice one, you, you want to let the student to choose the answer. So you give your you give your wrong answer and the correct answer here. So one plus one, one, two, okay. The choice three is four, the choice four is uh whatever. Okay, after you have given the four choices and then you have to set the grade. Okay, so what it means is uh, the correct answer. When they choose the correct answer, they get the marks, they get the grade. So my question is one plus one. So I go back to the two. Okay, the choice two, the answer is two. So I go back to a grade and then set the 100 grade here. So you can see it can be a minus mark. Or, or the positive 100 mark or no mark, okay? So for you can play around here, for example, you can do, uh, you get a correct answer, you get an additional mark. You get a wrong answer, I will deduct the mark. So uh, the typical we will play in the, in, the, in the exam. Okay, so after I have completed the editing of the first question, then I save and continue. Okay, so this one, there's a extra one I just not even mention. One or multiple answer, one answer only, and then the shuffle the choice. Shuffle means, uh, for example, we have four choices here. When the ERP displaying the choices for student, it will shuffle the answer, the sequence. It will shuffle it, so nobody can ask. The, 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 the friend beside him, hey, this one you choose A or B. Uh, uh, everybody you will get a different different sequence. But even the different sequence, it will follow back to, to the grade. Okay, follow back to the grade. So they choose the correct answer, it, they will still get the mark. Okay, self changes. Okay, I have done the first question. Uh, okay, let's do the second question. I do two or four. Okay, the second 100 plus 100 equal to 200. Okay, so if I mark, I give it five marks. Why give five uh, later? I will talk. So the correct answer is I already give, give the, true, the true answer. So the correct answer is true. So the student must choose the true, then they will get the mark. Okay, self changes. 
Oh, sorry. Okay, uh, preview. So, okay, you can see the blue, the blue section here. So, uh, the student, they will see for this one. They will see like this one. Okay, the below one is for you one. Okay, this is a preview. So I have self changes. Okay, now for this quiz, this paper, I have two questions. So two questions, I can also shuffle the sequence of the question. So just now we can shuffle the choices of the answer. Now we can shuffle the sequence of the question. Okay, just now I've mentioned the five mark, right? So the maximum grade, so the total marks is 10 marks. So the 10 marks, so 5 plus 5 is 10. So you have to uh, calculate. Uh, the ERP also can done for you one. So it will mention you, hey, this, you have 10 marks, but you only have two marks. So do you want to uh, equalize all the marks of the question? Okay, so I save it. Okay, after saving it, and then I'll go back out. Okay, so I can preview quiz. Okay, this screen is the student they will see. So one plus one equals two, so I choose the wrong answer for 100 plus two plus 100 are true. Okay, finish attempt. Okay, so submit and finish. For example, I've done the Okay, so it will display the correct answer for you and it will give the correct grade for the student. Okay, so this is a simple way to create a quiz for student. Okay, finish review. Okay, so you have attempt to you have attempt this quiz. So you have done this quiz. Okay, for the quiz one, I, I didn't have any experience here, just play around and then I know uh, the basic way to do it. Lah. So, uh, uh, maybe later I can, how can I give you guys, I search, uh, there's multiple, there's some YouTube uh, showing you how to create a quiz. They, they have much, much more advanced method to create. Lah. And the second one is the uh, import the question into the quiz. Why we do it? Uh, why why this one is, is important is because the quiz uh, usually we have more than two questions. We have forty questions. Or you, if you want to set up a question bank, you have one hundred questions. And then one hundred questions you want to use it for the for example whole semester. So you want to use it use random twenty question in the first quiz and the random random in the second random in the third one so you have the big question bank but it is not convenient to type or copy and paste one by one for 100 question into the ELP so uh, they have a import function so just import the all the text file the ELP will do the thing for you yeah Okay, so basically uh, what I have collected and uh, what I think is uh, us the usual function, usually uh, we will use it. So uh, basically my presentation is uh, until here. So for a wrap up, so everything start from the gear icon, okay? Everything start from the gear icon. Many, many functions inside here. So you can just play around here. Okay, you can just play around here. There's much more function over here. For example, the lock, the live lock. So the live lock, you can, you can view who is doing what, okay? During the, for example, last 10 minutes, okay? Which student doing what, like this. So for another, the lock. So the lock, you can check back what you have done, what your student have done, do, did your student come over here and then uh, download something, okay, view something or attempt to submission, so uh, you can check the log over here. Okay, 
So every activity can be hide and show. So uh, let's go back here. Oh, yeah, I'm stuck again. Yeah, so the remember just now we have an I the I function. You can op open the I, close the I. So you open the I, your student can see the material. You close the I, only you can see the material. Okay. Okay, so uh, don't afraid to try out new things. And then uh, the important thing, this ELP courses do not have direction connect, direct connection with the CMS. Uh, what it means is the every end of semester, we have to key in the marks into the CMS, right? So what you have done is in ELP is just a platform to, for you, for example, collect homework, Okay, maybe you can do the grading inside the ELP or you just use the ELP for the collection. You do the marking using your own Excel worksheet, for example. Okay, so what you have done in ELP is not related with CMS. It's just a platform for you to convey or collect the homework. Okay, so and this also no direct correction with the student course registration. So what they have choose in the CMS, not necessarily they must uh, enroll themselves in the ELP course. So what happened is last semester, uh, there's a little guy who like to enroll into every class. So for, from there you can see there's no direct connection from the ELP and the CMS. Okay. Okay. For until now, there's all my presentation. Okay. Any question? Do students need enrollment key to submit their assignment? No need. Once they have enrolled into your course and then they submit the assignment, the assignment you must turn on the turn in now. So the ERP will sort it out for you. Okay, any question? Oh yeah, one thing. Did I mention the unenroll a student from your own courses? Did I mention that one? Okay. For example, this is my last semester course. So I have a participant list over here. So you want to unenroll a student. So go to the gear icon and then the enroll user, okay, the first one. So you will see the list <coughs> again. And then over the right hand side, there's a cross icon. Okay, click and unenroll them. Just that simple. Okay, any question? Okay, so thank you for you all to okay. listen my messy English. Thank you. <laughs>